Okay, so last time we just did uh, sort of some uh, uh, introductory kind of uh, motivational stuff, you know, to try and convince you that these topics we cover are important topics to cover uh, and the homework assignments. Uh, there's really nothing too deep there, but it's just trying to get you to start thinking about some of those different topics, you know, crypto, access control, protocols, and software, okay? Um, okay, so now this is really sort of the start of the, uh, you know, substantive material. All right, so this thing here, this is a quote from uh, Alice in Wonderland. It's been encrypted with a simple substitution, one, one of the ciphers we'll talk about today. Uh, this is a quote from uh, Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Gold Bug, which if you've, uh, it's a really actually pretty interesting story. It's, uh, uh, you know, the usual thing where you have a pirate, right? What do pirates always do? They bury their treasure. I don't know why. They bury their treasure, uh, and then um, there's always a map, right, where you try to find the treasure. Well, in this one, there's not a map. There's actually an encrypted message that tells them where the treasure is buried, and it's encrypted with a simple substitution cipher. And most of the story, or a big chunk of the story, is really just about how to solve a simple substitution cipher. It just goes through you know, the process, which we'll talk about. So. Uh, okay, so first we need some terminology. Uh, cryptology, technically, is the art and science of making and breaking okay? uh, secret codes. Okay, So there's two parts there, making and breaking. So we can split it into those two parts. Uh, and we should, when talking about the making part, we should call that cryptography if we want to be really precise. Uh, and cryptanalysis is the breaking, breaking part, attacking ciphers, trying to find weaknesses. Now, uh, mostly people are not that careful, right? I mean, usually cryptography is kind of used as the generic term, and that's, I'll probably do that myself. Uh, this term here sounds too much like some medical procedure, so I don't really want to use that term. Uh, and probably I'll even shorten it and say crypto, okay, and just use that as kind of the generic catch-all term, and it should be clear from the context, you know, what we're, what we're talking about, okay? Uh, okay, more terms. All right, so you start off with a cipher or crypto system. Either term works. Uh, tends to be that crypto system is used a little more often with public key stuff and cipher with symmetric key, but you could use it either way. Okay, so that's the overall system. You start off with a message that anybody can read, right? That's the plain text. You run it through this encryption process, and you get cipher text. Okay, and the cipher text, who, who can read the cipher text? Can Trudy read the ciphertext? Can Alice and Bob read the ciphertext? Well, suppose Alice is encrypting a message and sending it to Bob. Hopefully, Alice and Bob can read it. You know, they can get back the plain text from the ciphertext. But what about Trudy? Can she read the ciphertext? Hopefully, we hope not. Okay, that's the goal. Okay, so anybody can see the ciphertext, but they can't read it. Okay, unless they're supposed to. Okay, to go the other way, I mean, your cipher is not going to be very popular unless you can go the other way and get the plain text back from the cipher. Okay, so that's the decryption process. Uh, you use a key to set up the crypto system. Okay, the system itself, you know, has you know, it's just 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 an algorithm. It's just a process. The key is sort of the secret part. Okay, that's the part that you have to that makes the whole thing work or not. Uh, there's two kind of. Uh, broad categories of ciphers. There's symmetric key ciphers and there's public key systems. Okay, symmetric key, what's the symmetry? The symmetry is the key, okay? The key that you use to configure the system is the same for the person who encrypts as it is for the person who decrypts, okay? So that's the symmetry. Now, in a public key system, there's two keys. There's one key you use to encrypt the message. There's a different key that you use to decrypt the message. Okay, so what's the big deal? Two keys or one, who cares, right? Why would that make a big difference? Well, it actually makes a huge difference, okay? And the difference is this, that if you have a different key to encrypt as to decrypt, well, I can make up a pair of keys, right? I can make up an encryption and decryption key, those things go together. Now, I can take the encryption <coughs> key and I can make it public. I can post it on my website. Anybody who wants to encrypt a message to me can go and get that key, encrypt the message, send it to me, as long as I'm the only one who has a decryption key, I'm the only one who can decrypt the message. Now, can we do that with a symmetric key system? No, you better not post the key on the website. 
okay, that submit system won't work. The key has to be known only to the sender and receiver. So that's a big difference, actually. Okay? Uh, and there's other cool things you can do with public key systems. Okay, so we'll spend a lot of time talking about those a little bit later. Uh, okay. We make this one very basic assumption uh, in cryptography, and actually in a lot of other areas of security, uh, but it's sort of clearest in cryptography here. So we assume that the system, the overall system, the algorithm you're using, sort of all the details of the system are known to the attacker. This will truly gets to know which algorithm you're using, you know, how many bits are in your key, uh, which version of the software, everything. We assume that Trudy knows all that stuff. Okay, so the only thing that's secret, the only thing Trudy doesn't get to know is the key. You know, either the symmetric key or in the case of public key, she doesn't get to know the private key, one that she keeps secret. Okay, uh, in particular, the crypto algorithms are not secret. Okay, so we have a name for this, of course, we have a name for everything. We call this Kirchhoff's principle. Okay, this was actually named after a person. Can you guess who? Kirkhoff. A guy named Kirchhoff. Yeah, he was a French uh, military official uh, for around the turn of the previous century. And he wrote a paper and said, basically, you know, if your crypto system falls into the hands of the enemy, it shouldn't matter. You should still be able to use it. So it shouldn't rely on the fact that your algorithm and your techniques are secret. Makes perfectly good sense in that context. But think about it. Why would we make this assumption? In other words, if we don't tell Trudy what algorithm we're using and all those sorts of details, <coughs> isn't it more difficult for Trudy? Don't we want to make Trudy's life as difficult as possible? In other words, it's sort of like we're giving Trudy some information here for free. Should we be doing that? There must be a reason, right? So, okay, so why do we do this, do you suppose? Well, I think it means if you assume that, if you assume that everything but the cryptographer is known, then you don't make any, um, not, not false hope, but it makes you focus more on keeping a secure system as opposed to assuming, well, you don't know about it, so it must be secure. Okay, yeah, there's something to that, okay. There are lots more crypto keys than there are crypto algorithms. It's much easier changing a key time to time that it is changing the algorithm. Well, that's true, too, but we could do both, right? I mean, we could sort of force Trudy to figure out what the algorithm is and also figure out what the key is, so that's more work than if she just has to figure out what the key is. Only a limited number of algorithms to guess from. Okay, okay, so possibly, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, for security purposes, it's easier to make something secure if you know what your enemy knows already. So if you just assume they know everything, Security. Yeah, okay, so that's kind of, I mean, you could sort of say worst case scenario, you assume they know how the algorithm works, so you defend against that. Okay, so you guys are close, okay, but you know, the way I would put it is something like this. For one thing, suppose you try to keep it secret, you know, what's going to happen in the real world? It's not going to be secret, okay, I mean, it's just a fact of life. You know, somehow or another, the information is going to come out. And people have actually done this. They violate Kirchhoff's principle all the time. And eventually, the details of the algorithm become public, okay? You just can't keep it secret. People can reverse engineer it out of software or whatever, pay off somebody who worked for the company. Who, who knows? They'll get the information, okay? So you really can't keep it secret. Okay, and what happens if you keep it secret? If you really try to keep it secret, that means only a limited number of people are going to look at it, right? So wouldn't you be better off letting lots of people look at it, look for flaws in the algorithm and problems with it before you build it into millions of cell phones rather than finding the problem after you build it into millions of cell phones? Okay, so that's sort of the thinking. Okay, you can't protect the, you can't really keep it secret anyway. Uh, that's what those are both sort of saying. And it's better to find the weaknesses beforehand. Okay, now this is really from real experience. People have done this. They've Tried to violate Kirchhoff's principle, always, almost always get themselves in trouble. Uh, okay, and in fact, one more thing here: uh, Kirchhoff's principle. Uh, we kind of have, we kind of apply this more broadly than to cryptography. In security in general, we often sort of say Kirchhoff's principle, and we mean that sort of the design itself is 
not secret. Okay, the overall design, what you're trying to accomplish. You know, you don't have as more secrets than you need. Okay, is what we what we say. Okay, uh, okay. So here's kind of our generic picture of a uh, crypto system. Um, just to maybe make the terms mentioned a little bit clearer. Okay, so you start off with the plain text goes into this uh, algorithm along with the key, right? And what comes out? Okay, ciphertext comes out. What's this squiggly line mean? Ciphertext is squiggly. It means you can send it, okay, and anybody can see it, and you don't care. Okay, it's presumed to be secure. It's, it's safe. Okay. And over on the other side, the person you're trying to communicate with, assuming it's a symmetric key system here, uh, they have the same key, they have the decryption algorithm, they plug in and they can convert the ciphertext back to the plain text. Okay. Now, um, in this picture here, what does Trudy get to know? What does she know? She certainly knows the ciphertext. If Trudy could not ever possibly get a hold of the ciphertext, we wouldn't bother. <laughs> okay, so Trudy, by assumption, certainly gets to see the ciphertext. What else? The what? The encryption algorithm. Yeah, okay, so she knows these algorithms, exactly how these algorithms work in all details. Okay, she knows everything about those algorithms. Okay, what about the other stuff? Key? Does she know the key? She better not. She knows the key, the game's over. Okay. Uh, how about the plain text? Does Trudy know the plain text? Well, that's a little more subtle. Uh, you know, if she knew all the plain text all the time, it would be, you know, pointless. Okay, we'd be, we would be hosed. But in practice, in actual practice, Trudy does have a reasonable chance of knowing some of the plain text. So our algorithms really have to be secure in the case where Trudy knows at least a little bit of the plain text. Okay. And we'll see why that's relevant in a little bit here. Okay. 